Hello, anyone and everyone, I'm Echo, and today we're exploring Amnesia of the Dark Descent. Unfortunately, due to uh, a bit of time wandering around, doing not much of anything and not getting anything accomplished, and then an interruption from family, I had to start this recording over again. So, hey, uh, welcome back, everybody, is sort of, I guess, whatever. Um, yeah, last episode, though, we came into this room, we used the crowbar break open the door, we came here, monster attacked us, and uh, I realized, after thinking about it for a bit, that the only thing we got from this whole room was, uh, this whole three rooms, in fact, was the notes from Daniel, the uh, or diaries, I should say, the Revelations ones, uh, one through three. Everything else uh, was... I think maybe we found a, a tinderbox or two. I can't quite remember. Um, but we found a crowbar. Yeah, we found a crowbar, but the crowbar was just to open this door to get a third piece of uh, of note and a little semi-tutorial thing to show us how to hide from monsters and closets. You know, so... Yeah, I don't know. It, neat, but entirely optional. And, uh, well, I mean... The, the story we got from the note is some of the, the best we've got so far. The cool little detail about there somehow being like a second orb or whatever. So that's neat. Anyway, let's make our way out here. Back to the back hall. Sir William Smith had been marked. There was no way for him to know that the young man from the other day cast such a terrible shadow. Ooh. Okay. And we're out here, and we look to the left, and oh, what's that? Blood! Oh, there's more blood! No, oh, there's a severed torso. Yep. That's, a. Uh... Ooh, it sure is torso-shaped. Vaguely. With really pointy pecs. Oh, wow. That man worked out... a lot. While constantly wearing, like, a suit of plate mail or something. Plate armor, I mean. Or is it plate mail? I forget what the correct terminology is. It's plate something. I don't know. But, we have to go back over here to the study. Professor Taylor was the second death caused by his damned curiosity. Yeah. Yes, back to the study, where I sincerely hope there are no monsters awaiting for us. We didn't leave this door Stop it with the darkness. Jeez. Yeah, we didn't leave that door closed last time. That's a bit curious. I guess the area probably reverts back to its, uh... The state when you first enter it each time or something like that. But hey, look at that. It's, the window was cracked when we picked up the oil. And if we had looked a little closer, we would see that there's a tinderbox outside. Cracked window panes are held together only by a weak wooden frame. So yeah, we need to find a way to break that open. I guess. Then I think we go out there. Little weird. Not sure how they expected people to figure that one out too easily. But, uh, eh, you know. Oh well. Alright, and you know what? Let's, uh, because I don't know what's going to happen after I break this window. So let's just sort of, yeah, let's just stack these two up here. Because if anything pops out at us when I break it open, I'm going to run back to this room and hide. <laughs> Yay! Slight headache. We're still at the same level of sanity we were before. Oh no, the tinderbox fell over the edge. Are you kidding me? That's not cool. Oh boy. This doesn't look safe. Oh, noises. Oh, the stuff's growing on the trees. Oh, that's nasty. Poor trees. What did the trees ever do to you guys? I like the creepy noises out here, though. I have to say. I really do. Okay. There's a thing. There's a door. There's quite a lot of thing, things and doors and stuff. What is that? 
When will it be my turn? Have I not shown restraint? My patience spans centuries. From where I came, mankind has not even wasted a breath, yet I bow to you. I have done so much for you, and I have gained nothing in return. Agrippa, I trusted you. It was I who, in all fairness, should have entered that gate. Hmm. Okay. Not sure what that's about. Gears and stuff, and chamber controller, using steam power for elevation, elevator schematics. That's a really weird way to work, to write a note. But, oh well, who am I to judge? Alright, unfortunately, there's no place to hide here. Emergency decelerator. And there's no real escape route. I guess we could go back out the window? But that hardly seems like a good escape route if a monster attacks us here. Hmm. Hmm. Not sure about all this. Uh-oh. There's the third rod. Elevator machine instructions. If the elevator breaks down again, make sure to use the steam engine to build up pressure before channeling it into the machinery. Adjust the levers to get the right amount of pressure inside the chamber. The meter should read up 8 and down 8. Make sure the flow is set according to the following chart. Trinity steam set functions, 4 phase amplitude, complete steam flow cycle. Note that the machine will not check proper configuration until all rods are inserted. Okay. Alright, let's use a bit more oil. It's safe to go up to like half, but... Oh! Oh! Okay, so this is just a dead end. This is the other side of that uh, rock wall. Okay, cool. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is heavy. It's got two tinder boxes for us. Sweet. Pretty sweet. Alright, anything else in this room? Not by the looks of it. Oh! Oh! Barrel contains no oil. Refilled lantern. Yep. We only got a little bit of it. Yeah, these are why um, I just made that comment about it's safe to put up to about half oil because uh, the other time I found one of these... It, uh, it seemed to fill up the same amount as one of these. This time it seems to have filled up less, though. Um, because we were already at, like, right about here, and it took us up to only there. So I guess the amount of oil varies depending on each one. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's a good idea to use all of our consumable oil items here and just, like, keep this topped off all the time. Because if this is full and we come and we find one of those, well, then we can't take them. And it's kind of probably a waste of time to run back and forth just to uh, take those oil things, especially considering that uh, that would also make, uh, you know, it'd, it'd be kind of hard to have to remember where all of them are. Picked up flow cycle rod. Okay. Good. Nothing's, nothing's popped out. Though something could easily be back in the place we came from. Alright. Oh, and let's uh, read the description on it. Flow cycle rod. Uh, same description as the rest. Oh. No, don't do that now. That's not good. Don't do it. Still slight headache. Okay. So it doesn't seem to have affected our sanity all that much. Oh, and we can see through the windows into the room slightly. That's nice. Okay. Alright. Run for it. <laughs> I don't know if anything was planning to come out and get us, but... He panted heavily, trying his best to keep himself from screaming. The medicine cabinet had been overturned and lay collapsed on the floor. He reached through the broken glass door and grabbed all the sedatives he could find. Okay. Oh. Did it get darker in here, or is it just me? Oh, I think it was... No, it was just the, uh... The shaky screen cam and stuff. Herbert, how did we find this place? 
An old friend back in Algiers gave me a map. Why isn't he with us? Didn't he want to come? He wanted to, Daniel. But things don't always turn out the way we planned. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so... Alexander killed the guy, I'm guessing? Just a random guess, you know. Oh, we can't play in the water anymore because there's a big, gross, gelatinous blob in it and it's spitting out blood instead of water. Aw, oh, jeez. Aw, oh, man, oh, jeez. Also, was there water flowing through these chows before? I think it's called a trow. Pretty sure it's called a trow. If there was water flowing through them before, I didn't notice. But now you certainly notice because now it's all red with blood. Oh, jeez. Oh, that, that's completely blocked. I don't think... I mean, I'm not going to try it, because it affects our sanity to touch that stuff. But I'm guessing we can't jump high enough to get over it. Or they might have just put an invisible wall there or whatever, because uh, I guess they you know, want us to know, like, no, you can't, you can't go back there now. It's too late. Okay. Mes message received, game. Okay. Um, did we ever actually find a door for this? Or a lock? A key? Damn it, we didn't. Um. I got the machine parts. We can't use the crowbar again because the crowbar was removed from our inventory when we used it the first time. Um. Look at the mementos real quick. An important key is hidden in the guest room. Find the key that unlocks the door leading to the machine room. Find a way to start the engine that powers the elevator. Oh, damn it. Are you kidding me? An important key is hidden in the guest room. Are you kidding? Is it the key to the machine parts? To, not the machine parts are in the machine room. Probably is. Oh, the corpse is back. Are you kidding me? The severed torso. Not cool. Strain the strange letter frightened him, but it was also the only one which offered him some comfort. Okay, so the key to the machine room is probably in here somewhere. Um, or a key is hidden in there. Hmm. Curious. Okay, well, time to look around for a minute. Yay. My favorite part of the game. And the one that's totally the easiest to say commentary over. <laughs> totally. Alright, anything in here? Nope. You know what? It must be. Logic states the key must be in that room. Because that was the only room that was blocked off and inaccessible until we found the little puzzle piece. Unless it's in here. I don't think I checked in here. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. No. No. Wait, I did check in here in the last episode. Because I remember having to move this. Yeah, everything... All the, uh, all the physics movable items, including doors, reset to their original positions whenever you reload an area. That is something interesting to note. The doors don't get repaired, though. Because the monster broke this one down. Okay, so yeah, the key must be in here. It's like I said, as logic would dictate, the, uh, you know, the important items are going to be hidden. And the best way to hide something is to, you know, put it behind a little puzzle. Yeah, screw you, shirt. Can't pick up the shirts, by the way. A little odd, perhaps, but... Oh, well. Oh, open up. No. Oh, boy. It's not in the closet we hid in, is it? No. Not in the floor in the corner? No, no, 
No. In that corner? No. In here? No. Can't move the shirts. So, <laughs> it better not be under the shirt. <gasps> oh! Don't tell me that was... No. Okay. Ugh! Oh, thank God. There it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it, then. Was that another flashback of him finding it the first time? Oh, it's in a bottle. Interesting. There you go. Machine room key. Cool. That was cl that was clever. He flipped through the book of monarchs looking for etchings and counted. Nine different kings from all over Europe had depicted had been depicted with an orb resting in their hands. Ooh. Fancy schmancy. Very much, yes. Oh, we must be back at God, are you kidding me? A slight headache. We've had our our sanity restored like two or three times while we've still been on a slight headache, and we're not at crystal clear yet. That's cheating. Super cheating. Alright. Machine room key. Tag reads machine room. Wow, who the thought? Okay, let's go. Professor Taylor was the second death caused by his damn curiosity. Okay, now it's definitely repeating. I know for a fact we've already read that one. For sure. Oh boy. This is... This looks like a machine for pigs now. <laughs> Alright. Alright, uh, let's check down the end of this hall first. See what's over here. Can't interact with that, so probably not a puzzle item. Is this is this darkness or not? I can't tell. I don't know. This certainly isn't where we're standing right now, the second, but uh, close the door. Close every door. Okay. Let's look around first. Poke at the boxes, see if there's stuff hidden in them. Like this and that, and this and that. There you go. See? Stand up, Daniel. There. All right. Note. Fourth of July, eighteen thirty-nine. Today, I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful, and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may, in fact, have inspired the Globus Cruciger, which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. It's not all that silly. You're messing with, uh, you know, horrible... dark monsters from another dimension or whatever. You know, or outer space, or from under the ocean. Whatever, uh, whatever Cthulhu had planned, you know. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that's gonna happen. Okay, so we got the three rods. We have to do it with this pressure. And then, okay. So this is the pressure thing. Let's read that note. About, uh, elevator machine instructions. Yes, if the elevator breaks down again, make sure to use the steam engine to build up pressure before channeling into the machinery. Uh, adjust the levers to get the right amount of pressure inside the chamber. The meter should read up 8 and down 8. Make sure the flow is set according to the following chart. Trinity steam set functions, 4 phase amplitude, complete steam flow cycle. Note the machine will not check proper configuration until all rods are inserted. Okay, so it has to read up 8 and down 8. No, just escape. So, we can either put it up 
or down, the numbers correspond to the amount of pressure being sent. We have to switch all the levers up or down, and each of them have to equal 8. I would guess that. Okay, so like, say 1, 5, plus 2, that'd be, wait, no, that'd be 6. So wait, yeah, 6, 8. So that'd be 8. And then, oh, 5, 1, and 2. I want this one to move up. This one will move. What's the matter? There. It wouldn't move at first for some reason. The flow is even and stable. Yeah. Okay, that was incredibly easy. Thank you. I love those sorts of puzzles. Well, I'm not going to say I love those sorts of puzzles. I don't mind easy puzzles. Not minding them is not the same as loving them. It's an important distinction. Why was that glowing? I don't know. Does that room have a title? No? Alright, let's not gonna open the door then yet. I'll see what's down there. Oh. There's a lot down there. Okay. Let's avoid it then. Okay. Got it. Another note. Machine equipment memo. Note that there are only two spare rods left in the storage for the elevator machinery. Make sure to only discard the ones which are badly damaged and keep the others in the inner study rooms in case all three would crack again. Oh, okay. So that's uh, a little note, I guess, in case we had uh, managed to get in here before going to the, the whatchamacallit, the machine parts room, or the, uh, or the inner study, because it's, it, although the, the game does quite clearly guide you along, it doesn't actually force you along any path, and we could have easily gone to, say, the, uh, the inner study first, or, uh, or the guest room before going to the machine parts room and we could have like we could have actually gotten the third thing from the from the uh we we could have gotten the third rod from the machine parts room or i mean the god damn it the, the inner study <laughs> we could have gotten the third rod from the inner study before everything else and then been confused about where the other two are if we you know were dumb and didn't read the notes or whatever and we also could have gone to the guest room first and gotten the key and come here before getting any of the rods so it's nice of them to put that there that's a uh, flow. That's a lot of words just to say flow. Okay, but there's another note. 14th of July, 1839. I've read every book I can find on the subject. While rich in legend and hearsay, my knowledge is lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia, he said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know. I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. Uh-oh. What to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful, with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep. Okay, this is cool. So now we know how Daniel got to Brandenburg Castle and started helping out Alexander. So it seems he went on that expedition in 
Africa, and he brought back the orb, and somehow Herbert had the second orb, which, like, sort of didn't exist or whatever. Um, but then he started having the nightmares, and he was, like, so confused about the orb, so he was searching out different professors and scientists and people to try and study the orb and find out more about it and everything. And along the way, he eventually took a peek at Herber's address book and started contacting people who he thought could help. And one of the people in Herbert's address book was Alexander Bredenberg. Okay, cool. All right, so the flow thing. The... Oh, is this a... Uh, all right, well, let's read the thing again, I guess. Uh, notes. Elevator machine instructions. Make sure the flow is set according to the flow following chart. Trinity steam set functions. Four phase amplitude. Complete steam flow cycle. Okay, so I think it should be self-explanatory. We've got four phase amplitude rod, flow cycle rod, Trinity steam rod. So... Wait. God damn it, let me just... Trinity Steam goes in first, I guess. Okay. All right. Then the uh, four phase amplitude rod. Then the flow cycle rod. Oh. So we can take them out. Okay. Huh. That seems a little weird. I mean, it, just because it's a... That's actually really weird. Because if you think about it, the names of each of them max up, ma matches up with a shape. Because there's a trinity rod that would match up with the triangle. The four-phase amplitude rod would match up with the square because it's got four corners. And then the cycle rod would match up with the circle, because a circle moves in a constant cycle. So I, it feels like we're supposed to put the cycle rod below the circle and everything, but it's not what the note says, unless I'm misunderstanding the note. So let me read that again. Make sure the flow is set according to the following chart. Trinity steam set functions, four phase amplitude, complete steam flow cycle. Note that the machine will not check proper configuration until all rods are inserted. Huh. Maybe that's the order I have to put them in, but not the, uh, so Trinity, then four, then, all right, let's take them all out. Trinity, then four, then cycle. Maybe it's telling me the order I have to put them in, so I have to put the Trinity in first, but I have to put it in the right thing. And it's not saying, you know, just from left to right, that's how you put them in. So, first Trinity in here, then four phase amplitude there, then flow cycle rod there. There you go, all rods are in place. Okay, cool. So, that should have the elevator working again. Unless there's something else I'm missing. And, uh, there could easily be something else I'm missing. And there could also easily be a, uh, monster spawning soon. Which would not make me a happy camper. So I'm just gonna prepare. Like this. <laughs> That's where we'll hide if a monster comes out. Alright, so this is uh, this is the part that kind of confuses me. Find a way to start the engine that powers the elevator. Okay. Oh, okay. I was gonna. I was about to say, if we just set all that up, then I wonder why there's rooms further down here to go. But I'm guessing we have to. I guess, I'm guessing all that was sort of preparation to power the engine, but now we have to actually go start it up. Okay, and there's no door here. That's not great. All right, well, note. 17th of July, 1839. How has this escaped me? 
They're all dead. Limbs scattered, heads split down the middle, their skin flayed as if boiled. I feel like I'm falling into myself. What's happening? Sir William Smith, Professor Taylor, now Dr. Tate. Is it following me? How can it not be? It's the damn thing I brought from Africa. Something is after me. I have no choice but to trust the Baron. He better know what he claims. If he is wrong, I suspect he'll regret it as well. Okay. Well, that is certainly interesting. So, yeah, he... All the people he went to go and visit and ask uh, about the orb and everything uh, got murdered. And because of the darkness following him. So that's why he went to Alexander, because he was desperate, even though Alexander, Alexander kind of creeped him out. Okay, cool. Well, uh, we'll keep that in mind for next time, because unfortunately I'm all out of time, I just realized. So I'm going to have to end the episode here, but I hope you all have enjoyed it, and I hope you all will continue to enjoy it. In the next episode, we will certainly uh, be repairing that elevator and going down it and probably having to run from a monster because I assume as soon as we power up the engine a monster's going to pop out and we're going to have to run up the freaking stairs and just get the frick out of here. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that next time. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.